I remember a couple of specific times after I lost my babies where someone said to me, what have you done to commemorate them? Or have you had a little ceremony to say goodbye? And at the time, I think I shied away from that because it felt too hard, it felt too painful to put myself through what I knew was going to be an incredibly emotional experience. And it wasn't until about six months after quite a few people had told me this that I realized that I really needed to let myself go through that process. And it was a really important part of letting go and saying goodbye and looking after myself emotionally. There's obviously a reason why we have funerals and why we have ceremonies, because it gives us that space to feel all the things that we need to feel. And I also know that when you lose a baby, particularly in the first half of pregnancy, we don't have a rule around how you need to say goodbye. Here in Australia, after I think 20 or 22 weeks, you can go on and have a funeral. But here, anything prior to that, they're not recognized at all. There's no official ceremony for you to say goodbye. And while of course you can go and organize your own funeral, I think a lot of women shy away from that because it just feels like yet another thing to have to organize when you're already struggling to get through the day to day. But I think it's so important and so I really want to encourage you today to think of a way that you can say goodbye and a ceremony that you can create, a ritual, a commemoration, whatever you want to call it, that you can do that helps you to feel in here connected to your baby and helps you to feel like this is a really special way to honor your baby and to say goodbye. And I want to tell you that there is no right or wrong way to do this. It really doesn't matter what you do, which is not me saying it doesn't matter. It does matter. <laughs> it matters that you do it with intention and that you do it by picking something that's really meaningful for you. But what I'm saying is it doesn't matter if Sarah over there goes to the beach and releases ashes into the beach and says a little prayer and cries with their partner. And then over here, Alice decides that they're going to get a really large gathering of their family and friends together and everyone takes some time to say a few words. Or that then even over here, maybe I will choose to just have a solo ceremony on my own, doing things that are meaningful for me. And we're gonna talk about some of those things that you might wanna to do today. It doesn't matter, but it does matter. It matters that you do something that you pick something that's really meaningful for you and that you find a way to commemorate and honor your baby. And no, your baby's not gonna know, but you know, and you who has to go on and you who has to somehow find a way to reconcile all these emotions in your body, I know you'll find it helpful if you've had an experience like that where you can hold yourself tenderly, when you can connect spiritually to yourself and to your baby and you can create a space that you can say goodbye. So before I get into talking about some of the ideas that I have for how you might go about doing this, I do just wanna let you know that I have created a video where I take you through a ceremony. So sometimes you don't wanna think about it. Sometimes it feels too hard. So over in my online yoga circle, I'll leave those links down below. I've created a video where I guide you through a ceremony. And again, it's not the perfect ceremony. It might not even be right for you, but maybe it will give you a few ideas. So I really wanna encourage you just to pick and choose what feels right for you. Create a couple of hours, a space in time where you can define this is me saying goodbye to my baby. And yes, you will likely be a mess. You will likely cry the entire way through it. So one idea that you might choose to do is a nature mandala. So you could pick flowers, you could collect rocks or shells. I find this one is a beautiful way to include children in the practice. So if you have older children and they are really present and aware of the baby that's lost, I think it's important to involve them in a ceremony to say goodbye to their little brother or sister. So you can start the ceremony right from the beginning as you go to collect these items. Allow that space to be really stress-free and just holding space for everyone's emotions. There might be meltdowns, there might be tears. Just try and not rush it. Allow yourself to walk mindfully. Let your mind wander to your baby. Think about what should have been. Let yourself cry and with love and with intention, collect those items and then come back together in a space and create a mandala. A mandala is simply a geometric shape and it's often been used in spiritual practices to create mindfulness, to create like this trance-like state. So allow yourself to do it quietly and with reverence and really carefully placing those pieces where you want them to go 
in honor of your baby. It's like when you don't have anything you can tangibly do for your baby and to say goodbye. This is a really beautiful practice that while you're creating the mandala, you're dedicating your time and your love to your baby. So another idea for your ceremony is to use candles. Candles and flame are a really beautiful way to focus your attention, to bring this sense of reverence and connection. And I really like using candles because I feel like it's a way we can connect to other people. So I know for me, after losing my babies, I asked on Instagram for the women in my community to also light a candle. And I will often do that now when a woman in one of my pregnancy yoga classes is going through this. I ask the women in my community to light a candle and I will often just be inundated with women around the world lighting candles and sending their love. And I just think when we can all sit in that space of true connection, it is magic. And you do feel held when you receive a picture of someone else taking the time to light a candle and to send you love, it feels really special. So maybe you want to include other people in this and ask for your mom, your sisters, your friends to light a candle with you at a certain time. And maybe you in your own space, light a circle of candles and sit in that space and just feel their love and send your love to your baby and wish them well, wherever they may be. Another thing that you can incorporate into your ceremony is some journaling or some writing. So I know many women who found it really helpful to write a letter to their baby, to just let them know all of the things that they were wishing that they were able to do with their baby. And, and I think sometimes written word, because it requires us to really think about the words that we're thinking and form them into sentences, that can help us to get a little bit more clarity around what we're thinking and what we're feeling. Because when you're just feeling this like jumble of emotions and all the things, Writing can really help to clarify and to crystallize that for us. So you can include that in your ceremony as well, making space to just write your baby a letter or just to write out all of your emotions. So I know many of you have already grabbed a copy of my book. So I wrote this throughout the 12 months that we lost three babies and then throughout my pregnancy with Luca, who is my third boy. And many of you have shared how helpful the journaling activities are in this book for helping you just to connect with that part of yourself that is so tender and raw. Journaling really can be so powerful and so healing. So maybe try that one if you're feeling quite lost and confused and just all over the place in grief. I really wanna emphasize that your ceremony or your ritual can be super simple. For one of my losses, my husband and I went down to the beach and we simply just scattered his ashes amongst the yellow flowers that grow in the dunes. And it was a really simple, really beautiful way just to make space in our lives to just be holding each other and honoring the loss that we'd been through. And sometimes you don't need words. Sometimes you don't need to say anything magical. It doesn't have to be this grand gesture. It just has to be holding each other in that space, sitting there, holding hands in a space where you're both honoring the hurt that the other person has gone through. So I know of other women who have planted a tree for their baby, which is a really beautiful way of honoring them and having a space to come back to, to sit with them. So I've talked about before how hard anniversaries can be. So as we come up to due dates or as we come up to the day that we lost the baby. So having a tree or a special space in your garden or in your house, some people create an altar of things maybe that they had bought for their baby that you can come back to on those dates and just sit in that space and just allow yourself, even if it's just to sit and cry, if you're able to, to talk to your baby, whatever it is, just creating with intention this space for ourselves to come back to. And this space where our babies still feel real and a part of our lives. Because I think too often when you miscarry, when you lose a baby, they become invisible in our lives. The rest of the world just goes back to its regular life and you can be left feeling like, but what about my baby? And you can feel a big sadness, not just for the baby you lost, but also this feeling of like, but there's no space in this world for my grief. And so creating a ceremony, creating an altar, creating a space in your garden where you can go to even a space in nature, so if it's a forest or a beach where you can go to and that feels like a special place that you can connect with your baby, I think that's a really helpful part of the grieving process so that you can come back to that connection. I really like that quote about grief being misplaced love. It's like all that love we have for our baby and there's nowhere to put it. And so I really think this ceremony 
and creating spaces in your life, whether it's lighting a candle on special days, whether it's an altar, whether it's a plant in your backyard, all of it is about creating space for that love that you have. Because I think if you don't have anywhere to put it, it can feel really heavy to carry. And while none of this is gonna make the pain necessarily go away, as you can see from this video, I still get emotional talking about my babies. And I just view all of that emotion as all the love that I have for them. And then I try to put that love in a space that feels good and connected so that I can carry on with my beautiful, happy life. And I can focus on all the joy that I have as well. And yes, I will always carry the sadness and the love as well, but that's okay. Because it's like through this process of grief, my heart has grown big enough to hold all of it. All the love, all the sadness, all the joy, all of it. I want to encourage you to create a ceremony, to create a space for your own baby, to create a space for your grief and for your love to live alongside itself in your body and in your life. If you don't know where to start, I'd like to invite you to come and join my online yoga circle. Come and find that video where I guide you through a ceremony for letting go and let the community be there to support you. Namaste.